What's going on? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Hey, thanks for staying in, um, sheltering in place, and watching because, you know, we're all doing this together as a quarantine team. Yeah. Now, we're still expecting to see Apple's iPhone SE 2 or iPhone 9 launch this week, so keep your eyes open for Apple's low-cost iPhone for this year that will take a lot of cues from the iPhone 8 with an A13 chip and Touch ID, and you know that I'll break it all down once the announcement is official. That might not be the only thing, though, that we see this week, but let's get to the big news first, starting with a wide-ranging report from Bloomberg covering the iPhone 12 and the new details for a smaller HomePod and AirTags, plus... We've got Apple Watch Series 6 and AirPower 2020 leaks too. So first up, Bloomberg reports, like others, to expect an iPad Pro-like design for this year's top-tier iPhones. We're still expecting the four new iPhones, but expect at least the two iPhones replacing the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max to take design cues from the iPad Pro. Now, they'll have a stainless steel edge and sharper rounded corners instead of the sloping kind of curved edges of the iPhone design that we have right now. It's a callback to the iPhone 4 and 5 designs that I love. Hearts. Aww. They're also saying that due to the coronavirus pandemic, some of the new phones could be released weeks later, but still fall within the fall time frame. And you know the rest of the stats, all the different screen sizes, the A14 processor. We had the leaks from last week revealing the triple lens with the LiDAR sensor, same as the iPad Pros, plus a potentially smaller notch for some of the models. Please. Now, since we know a lot about the iPhones already, you know what? I was really more drawn to details about the smaller HomePod, aka HomePod Mini. Now, Bloomberg reports it'll be about half the size of the original while keeping a similar design. It's been in development for several months, but has faced delays, and Apple's now targeting it for a release in the second half of this year. So the plan is to offer it at a cheaper price to better compete against Amazon and Google. But we know that the standout feature has always been its sound. So it's really up to Siri, the OS, music service support, and device compatibility to just catch up. Now, 9to5Mac found that the latest HomePod software, 13.4, has changed under the hood. It's now based on tvOS instead of iOS, so this won't change how you use the HomePod if you have one, because watchOS, tvOS, and then the HomePod, they're all iOS at their core. But the HomePod is more aligned with tvOS since they're devices that are always plugged in, so they don't really need any of this battery consumption management. And then they both can act as a hub for HomeKit. So it's more likely that the switch is because iOS 14 will remove compatibility with devices using an A8 processor, which the first gen HomePod has. There were also references to at least two new models of Apple's HomePod discovered by 9to5Mac in the latest HomePod software. But so far, no other details have been discovered other than that. And also we're expecting to see a new Apple TV this year based on leaks from tvOS 13.4 code with an A14 chip. It will use the same as the upcoming iPhone, but details are still scarce. All right, before we get to more about AirTags and new leaks about the upcoming Apple Watch Series 6, this video is sponsored by Cove. Now check this out, this is their new speaker. It's called the Commuter Split 2 and it has a nice loud sound for its size. I'm just gonna bump it up a little bit. Get it, get it, yeah. It's really good for its size and all I have to do is just connect it over Bluetooth. It's obviously portable and you can take it with you anywhere. You can even listen to it, let's say, right? You can still go outside, just hop on a bike. It also has some really, really good bass for its size too, which makes it special. But what makes this different is that this splits with a twist just like this so you can really create a surround sound feeling around you when you separate them i can you know put maybe one in one room one part of the room one over here to fill it up and you'll be able to charge both speakers via micro usb you'll get about seven hours of battery life with a single charge plus they're water resistant it mic has a 30 foot range if you want to use your voice assistant with it so check it out the new commuter 2 split from cove you can get over 60 percent off from the link on screen and in the description using the code bt base it's just something unique and different Look, I could pop them right back together. So thanks again for Co for sponsoring this video. All right, let's just get back to the show and a little nugget of info for the rumored air tags. Apple's own location tracking tags, they're still expected to arrive as early as this year. But Bloomberg reports that the tile-like trackers will be bundled with an Apple-designed leather sleeve and a keychain to attach it to objects. They're described as these thin, small, puck-shaped tags that have been in development for over a year. And they'll use Apple's ultra-wideband U1 chip for precise location tracking while leveraging Apple's large ecosystem and user base. And if you thought the AirPower mat was dead, I got news for you. 
Apple's Air Power is not dead. Now, John Prosser, he has a juicy and really deliberately blurred out picture of what's believed to be a new version of the Air Power mat that Apple's working on. Now, according to his tweet and information, engineers on Apple's sharing and proximity team are getting prototype units of something called C68. It has an A11 chip inside of it to dynamically manage heat, and the team has been asked to work on software communication between devices for a future product. So first thing to notice, the original AirPower wireless charging mat had the power cable coming out the middle of one of its long sides. This image does not, and reports were that the first iteration kept overheating with its multiple coil array, and they couldn't solve the problem, so it was put on hold. Now, I still have the box with a wireless charging case for AirPods that actually is the only visual mention on packaging of Apple's air power mat anywhere anymore. Th this was really it. And then obviously they canceled it. Now the Apple watch itself has its own tweaked proprietary charging method that requires more energy to charge it. So Prosser says on Apple's previous prototype, if they had an Apple watch placed alongside other devices, it would cause the entire mat to overheat and in some cases combust. So the mat would actually burn sometimes. In this new prototype, it now has the ability to route power to specific regions and then can dynamically wait for temperatures to drop before applying more power to prevent this mat from overheating. So the thinking is, is that if they have the production capacity and the A11 is key to making this work, that the air power could return sometime in the late fall or maybe holiday 2020. And you know, I think fans of the ecosystem would just love to see the return of the air power if they can get it working because I think everyone loves a comeback story, except when the Cavs come down from the first ever 3-1 deficit in the NBA Finals in history to defeat my Golden State Warriors when I was there to see it happen in front of my eyes in Game 7. Ah! In Apple Watch news, a few new pieces of info from website The Verifier for the next Apple Watch. Don't expect an all-new redesign for the Apple Watch Series 6. You know, they're sticking with this corner design that they love. And I know that there's a lot of you who are like, team, give me a round, Apple Watch, a circle. I'm kind of like that, but also I like the fact that the screen utilizes so much more space, you know, compared to the previous design. The latest rumors continue to say we'll be getting, right, a new processor, better battery life, blood oxygen monitoring. Uh, we have new sleep tracking and then all the new benefits for a new Watch OS 7. And that's just a whole lot. For 2020 but watch os 7 will not be compatible on all apple watch models according to the verifier the apple watch series 2 will not be able to run the new os this year the device is reportedly too slow to run it reliably but it'll still get minor updates and then bug fixes but let's look down the road and max weinbach reports that apple may be looking for new mental health features where the apple watch will eventually learn to be able to detect panic attacks or if a user is under stress and then offer assistance like breathing exercises it's just in the discussion phase and is really two years or more away from launch weinbach also says apple may add display tech for the apple watch that's usable underwater in future versions and maybe even more waterproof than existing models to handle high velocity immersion. So that's doing things like water skiing, snowboarding, or similar activities. And now another thing, right? We have this idea of Touch ID coming to the Apple Watch. Well, it isn't a myth. According to the verifier, Apple has two watch prototypes that they're working on. One has Touch ID that's integrated into the digital crown. So that's the same location where you can do an ECG on the current Apple Watch. The other would embed Touch ID into the screen and we know that we've seen these on other android phones where you can use the display directly touch your finger to unlock it the chances of either of these coming to the apple watch series 6 is pretty slim so more likely series 7 or series 8. now the good news it doesn't look like there will be a notch on the apple watch unless they're not telling us everything <laughs> oh you knew i was gonna do that come on how could you how could i not and just hold back this entire show. Like I did it for those of you still watching. Hi mom. She always watches to the end. And since we're about wrapped up, it's always good to leave you with something to feel good about, some free stuff. So since many of us are staying at home during the pandemic, Apple is making several Apple TV Plus shows available to stream for free for a limited time. Shows like Dickinson and For All Mankind, those are both very good, but also shows that I haven't even watched like Ghost Rider, Helpers, Servant, Snoopy in Space and The Elephant Queen 
They are all free. You don't need an Apple subscription. Just sign in with your Apple ID and it's yours for free. And if you think about it, you could watch this video three times in a row, which would be equivalent to one of those. All right, that's gonna do it for now. Thanks again to Cove for sponsoring this video. And if you like this, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell, ding, to get all my videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you've gotta check out my Apple Bits XL audio podcast where we go even deeper, cover the stories that you won't find here, and bring special guests along for the ride. So thanks so much for watching. Take care, please be safe, everybody. And you know, iPhone SE2, iPhone 9, it's a coming. So take care. We'll talk soon. All right. Peace.